Exodus chapter 14 is where we're going to be. Amen. Coming up with the text on this Sunday morning. Exodus chapter number uh, 14. And we will go there. See exactly what the Lord is saying unto us on this Sunday morning. Bless his name, bless his name, bless his name. Amen. Thank you for giving, thank you for giving, thank you for giving, thank you for giving. Thank you for your giving, thank you for your giving, thank you for your giving. I'm excited about what God is doing. Not what the enemy is doing because he don't win. But what God is doing. And I, I promise you, every time. You're doing something for the Lord, and the enemy will switch his up and bring it up. You can feed him every time. Do I have anybody there that know we can feed him every single time, no matter how he come, no matter how he try to sneak into the sanctuary? Amen. We have. Amen. We know you have already defeated. Grab your Bibles and look at the book of Exodus, chapter 14, and, and those of you that are still getting, continue to get it. Amen. As our ushers are coming by, you know. Again, just let them know if you need change. They'll make sure you get change immediately and then after the service. Well, thank you for all the givers in this place. Their life changes. Many things are happening in their life as they continue to sow seeds into this ministry. They're growing. They're effective and they're becoming relevant. So again, thank you for every giver. Come on and give God a hand. Come on, I need to hear loud for giving. Hallelujah. Jesus. Exodus chapter 14, men, verses 1 through 15, and y'all know how we do here at Calvary. We ask you to stand as we reverence the reading of God's word. We reverence the reading of God's word. Exodus 14, chapter, verses 1 through 15. Amen. The Lord. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and turn camp before Piahba, between Midgal and the sea opposite of Belsafon. Before it shall you encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he shall follow after them. I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord and that they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh, the servants, was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. He made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of the king of Egypt and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high. But the Egyptians pursued after them. All the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them in camp by the sea beside by Amra or Belzephon. And when Pharaoh drew near, verse 10 says, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore have you dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians, for it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness? And Moses said to the people, Fear you not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom he has seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. 
The Lord shall fight for you. You shall hold your peace. And the close verse says, And the Lord said to Moses, Wherefore cry you to me, speak to the children of Israel, that they go forward. And the Lord said to Moses, Wherefore cry you to me, speak to the children of Israel, that they go forward. You can have your seat in the presence of the Lord. And I wanted to share with you, and, and you can kindly share with somebody else. This morning we're going to talk about there shall be glory after this. Let somebody else know there shall be glory after this. When you uh, consider glory, because we often talk about glory in different phases, but today I want to share with you the weight of God. The power and the honor that God has bestowed upon you. And the manifested presence of the Lord that's on your life. Those are the glories that I want to share with you all today. Again, it is the manifestation of the presence of God on your life, in your life, the honor of God, but and yet the weight of God is on your life. So God is yet doing something heavy. In your life. And it will easily frustrate the enemy. Because when glory is on you, glory has a tendency to follow. Sometimes glory will precede you. Hallelujah. Because glory knows something's going to happen after this. After all this is over, glory shall be revealed. The heaviness of God, the weight of God that's on your life. God says, I am going to give you power and honor you during this time. Because it is my glory that shall be revealed and manifested after this. After all, you have to go through the glory of God is coming after this. So don't trouble yourself while you're in it. But look forward to what's getting ready to happen. Hallelujah. I said don't trouble yourself with why you're in it, but look forward to what God is about to do in your life. Not only in your life, but in the life of your family and those in whom you are connected to. God's about to bring the weight of his glory into your situation, into your presence, into your family, into your connections, into your finance, into your health. God said, I'm about to put my weight of glory on your stuff. And when God put weight on it, there is not a demon or a devil that can prohibit or stop the weight of God that's getting ready to enter into the capacity of where you are. Uh, God, somebody shout, I'm maximizing my moments. That means I am going to make the best of every moment of my life because God promised me that that shall be glory after this. Children of Israel, wandering in the wilderness, 40 years, 40 years, they are wandering in the wilderness. But because of who they are, God covers them in the wilderness. He gives them mouth. He gives them quail. I hear what I'm saying to you. He puts shoes on their feet. He leads them by a pillar of power in the day and a pillar of fire by night. Don't tell me God won't be there in your wilderness experience. Don't tell me God won't be there to cover you while you're going through the experiences that God's allowing you to go through. That he wants you to understand that shall be glory after this. So while they're wondering, God has already spoken to Moses. And God is telling him in the first chapter that there's 
going to be deliverance from bondage. He comforts him for what's coming. The first chapter says that there's going to be comfort and deliverance for the believer out of bondage. So in other words, Moses, no matter what Israelites are dealing with, I am the comforter. I am the deliverer. I will bring them out of bondage as long as they keep their hand up in my hand. And the wilderness is a crazy place. Somebody tell your neighbor the wilderness is crazy. Because in the wilderness it doesn't seem like nothing is going to happen. Have you ever been to a place along the journey where it didn't seem like it didn't seem like nothing was going to happen? And all of a sudden, God showed up. Ah, who, listen, have you ever been in the wilderness? Have you ever been sick? And it didn't look like it didn't feel like nothing was going to happen. And all of a sudden, God just showed up in your stuff. God showed up in your situation. God showed up in your sickness. And God put the weight of his glory on your stuff. And you were lit. The wilderness was an experience for the children of Israel. And it was their elder to prove to them that God is a promise king. I told you from day one, I got your back. I don't know why you're tripping. I told you from day one, no matter what you go through, you are mine. And I will not allow the enemy to trip on you. I will not allow you to be defeated. You might go through, but the only reason you're going through is the comfort. Somebody need to hear that in the Holy Ghost. The only reason why you're going through is to come through. The only way I get through the door is I go through the door and on the other side of the door. Somebody tell your neighbor there's something on the other side waiting just for you. On the other side of the storm, on the other side of the problem, on the other side of the pandemic, on the other side of the COVID, there is something that God has promised prophetically that's waiting for you just to get on the other side. Somebody ought to look at your neighbor and say, I'm getting ready to walk. I might have to walk by myself, but I'm going to the other side because there's going to be glory after this. And you don't mind, just elbow your neighbor and tell your neighbor there's going to be glory after what you've gone through. You didn't go through it just to go through it because God has assigned the weight of his glory. The heaviness of his glory is in your life. It's the presence of the manifestation of God that's about to happen. Hallelujah. Y'all sit down for a minute, please. And the power of Deacon Mary is after all we've gone through. For some strange reason, we're still here. We're here, Brother Tyler, because we're banking on the promises that he already gave us. We haven't thrown our hands up, or neither have we thrown in the tower because we're banking on the promises that he gave us from the beginning of time. I wish I had somebody here that's banking on the promises that God gave you from the beginning of time. I told you I was going to hold your hand in the storm. I told you I was going to deliver you. I told you I was going to heal your body. I told you I was going to perform a miracle 2021. I told you you would not be in it much longer because I kept my hand on your life. Hmm. Shall be glory after this. Wandering in the wilderness 40 years, but yet you have a God that sustains you in the wilderness. God has sustained you and I during this pandemic. He's held us together. He's covered us with the blood of his son Jesus. He's given us promises. He told us no weapon formed against you shall prosper. God has put his covering around us. He shielded us with the word of God. And now we're walking in the power of an almighty God. 
and we understand that no matter what happens, God's going to keep his word that he placed on your life. Is there anybody in here this Sunday morning that's banking on the mere fact that God is going to keep his word about what he said about you? It does not matter what you go through. It does not matter what you deal with. It does not matter who come against you. God says, I'm going to keep my word because there's going to be glory after all that you've been through. I'm going to put my weight on it. Hear this in the Holy Ghost. God said, tell them I'm getting ready to put my weight on your life. I'm going to do some amazing things. Y'all give me about five minutes. And when he brings Moses out of the covenant, he shows him the power of the burning bush. He says that the angel is inside of the burning bush. But then hear the prophet of the word. Then God speaks to Moses out of the burning bush. The angel is in the bush. By the name of the Lord was inside the burning bush. And the bush did not consume. But then God spoke out of the burning bush. So in other words, God says, I'm going to speak through your body. I'm going to speak through your stuff that you're going through. I'm going to get ready to dance the fire. That's been trying to burn you. I'm going to get inside of the fire. Speak out of the fire. Speak out of the fire. And allow you to see me in the fire. God just told me to tell you. I want you to start seeing me in every situation of your life. Good, bad, or indifferent. I want you to start seeing me in every situation in your life. Because if you can see me in it, you can come out. If you can see me in it, you'll understand that God is getting ready to get glory out of it. If you can see me in it, you'll walk in your healing place. You'll walk in a place of miracle to point miracle. If you can see me in it, you'll start seeing your family transition and transform. If you can see me in the trouble. Because what happens, a lot of people don't see trouble but trouble. You don't see nothing in trouble but trouble. But can you imagine just 30 seconds with me seeing God in the trouble? If I can see God in the trouble, trouble won't last always. I said, if I can see God in the trouble, trouble's getting ready to pass me back. Ah, somebody need to understand this too shall pass. Put the neighbor on the shoulder and tell him, God wants you to see him in the trouble. Because here it is. If I see trouble as it is, it's still trouble. If I see the situation as it really is, it's still the situation. If I look at the circumstances, and being the circumstances that I'm in, it is what it is. But imagine seeing God in the circumstances. It's no longer what it is. It's what I call it to be. God wants to have somebody in. It's no longer my circumstances. It becomes God's circumstance. And God gets inside and turns that thing around. It transforms. It transitions. It changes. Somebody need to hear in here this morning. God said, you are a life changer. You're getting ready to change the life of many people because you're getting ready to see God in everything that you're facing this year. He sees the angel, but he hears God. I love that. He sees the angel. And the angel doesn't sing, but God speaks out of the burning bush. I can see it one way, but when God speaks it, he allowed me to see it this way. Are y'all hearing that? Now that Moses understands God speaking, God says, now take your shoes off. For the very ground you're standing on, it's holy ground. God now speaks out of the bush, turn normal, natural ground into holy ground. Because where his presence is, it must be holy. I said where his presence is, it cannot be a natural thing. Something must change when God stepped on the scene. I said a witness in here that ever since God came into your life, things are starting to turn around. 
God is doing different things in your life at different times. God is transitioning you, positioning you, placing you into the place that he originally called. All God was doing out of the burning bush was putting Moses in the place that he originally called him to be. To go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. But I've got to get you in the place that you have the power, that you have the honor, and that you have the weight of my glory on you to go tell Pharaoh. Because Moses said to God, who shall I say sin, man? God said, tell them I am. I'm the holy God of Israel. I'm the God of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, I'm the God that departed, helped you depart. I'm the God that's been keeping you down through the years. And I need you to hear this in the Holy Ghost. God has been keeping you and I down through the years. No matter what we've gone through, it's been nobody but God. It was not your husband. It was not your wife. It was nobody but God. It was not the marriage, it was not relationship, it was nobody but God. It was not even your money that was keeping you together. Because sometimes your money got funny and God stepped in and showed you, I'm still your over child. I'm still your provider. You want to look your neighbor square in the eyes and tell him he's still your over child. Now let's go to the last part of the text. Now Moses has the encounter. Chapter 1. He is told, I am the God that's going to deliver you and bring you and the children of Israel from out of bondage. Tell somebody you are coming out of bondage. Nothing is going to hold you captive, not, not one more second. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying? I said nothing will hold you captive or in bondage for another second. I want you to release your hands of the atmosphere because God is releasing you from all kinds of bondage and captivity and toxic things that are trying to overwhelm your life. I need somebody in the Holy Ghost to understand what I just said to you. God's releasing you from toxic things that's trying to overwhelm your life, that's trying to put you in captivity and bondage. God said that somebody here, the devil's trying to put you back into captivity. But you need to tell the devil you're a liar. I came out and I'm not going back in. God, I don't know who that was for. God said, tell them that the enemy is trying to put you back in captivity, but you need to speak loud by him and tell him you are a liar. God brought me out and I am not going back. I'm not turning around. Not this time. So there is the move of God saying, I am your deliverer. I'm freeing you from bondage. So so touch about telling I'm free. Now that I've given you the promise, I've got to show you that it's free. So I take you to the burning bush. I allow you to see the angel, but hear me. You gotta get the power. I allow you to see the angel, but hear me. And then when I speak, everything around starts to get holy. Take your shoes off, both because you're on holy ground. Well, I'm giving it to take you. It's going to take power. But I'm going to give you the weight of my glory. Hmm. I'm going to put honor on your name. I'm going to give you power. And most importantly, I'm going to manifest my presence in your life. You all hear what I'm saying? So wherever you go, I'm going to be with you. Oh, when you go through the water, I'm going to be with you. When you go through the fire, when you go through the fire, I'm going to be with you. So let your neighbor know whatever you're going through, God is with you. And so the next phase, he says, when I don't tell Pharaoh because you're sending me, and the only reason why God sent him, the Bible said that God said, I heard the cry of my people. I heard the cry of my people. They did not say a word. They cried. They did not say a word. They cried. If any word we heard them say, it was murmuring and trumping. Stubbornness, but God said, I heard that cry. So God said, even though they were a modern and I heard what was on the inside, they needed a deliverer. They were going through, but they needed a deliverer. Then they started to blame Moses. Well, why did you bring us over here 
But at least in Egypt, we had graves that if we were to die, we could have been properly buried. And Moses went to God, and God says, Don't come to me, go tell me. You all hear what I'm saying? Moses, Moses went to God, God said, Go tell me. But stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. For the Egyptians that they see the death. And not wanting to see them forever anymore. I came to tell somebody about you. The enemy that you've been seeing, you're not going to see that enemy anymore. That enemy is getting ready to disappear because God is getting ready to manifest his presence. And where the presence of the Lord is, the purpose of them is liberty. God is getting ready to free somebody in this place in the power of the Holy Ghost. God is going to free somebody that's on Facebook and Instagram that's listening to us. God said, I, am, I want to make you free. I don't set you free. I make you free. And the Bible says, the Son has made free. They are free indeed. Touch your neighbor. If you're not afraid to tell them you are free indeed. That means that God is getting ready to do some amazing, authentic things in your life. And you are getting ready to walk in the power of God that you've never walked before. If you believe God is doing something in your life that's transitioning and changing, and that there's going to be glory after this, I need you to jump to your feet and give God the best praise you can give and tell him, let's get ready for some glory after this. God is getting ready for glory. The way of the Lord is on your life. I said the way of God, the power of God. The manifested presence of God is on your life. God's getting ready to overtake you. The last thing, somebody shout the last thing that God does with Moses after he's on holy ground. Moses is getting ready to go to Pharaoh to tell him, let my people go. Moses gets to the place where he has something in his hand. Tell your neighbor God is going to put something in your hand this year. Tell somebody else you to tell. God is going to put something in your hand this year. Wow. Tell somebody else, God's going to put something in your hand this year. Now, I want, you to hear, I want you to hear the power of the something that's in your hand. God said to Moses, what is that that you have in your hand? Moses said, a rod. He said, stretch it forth and depart. To see from the land that the children of Israel might go to the other side. <laughs> so, what you have in your hand, God says, stretch it forth, and everything that's not like Him is going to depart from you. It's going to depart because God is making way for you and your family to get to the other side. Everything's not like, listen, everything's not like God is going to depart from you. It does not necessarily have the time, but it's got to depart. In other words, God says, it's got to get out of your way. Because I told them it's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. Stretch it off. I can see the bottom. And Pharaoh and his horsemen are coming. But here, what God says, I am going to harden his heart. He come after you. Because the first thing Pharaoh will say, we have them entangled. They have messed up. They have nowhere to go. Why did we even let them go? Why did we, why did we stop them from serving us? You know why? Because God has a plan for them. And God has a plan for them. God has a plan for you. And the Bible says it's exceeding abundantly. All you can think or ask of him. That broken prophetically, you ought to touch your own self and decree and declare. God is in me. I need somebody to say that with conviction. The power of God is in me. And God is doing a new thing in my life this year. Great things are happening. 
Great things have not come. If somebody here believes great things are happening, lift your hands and praise God as if it's already happened. The great thing that you're waiting for God to do. I want to praise God as if it's already happened. So if you need somebody healing your family, praise God like they're already healed. If somebody needs to be delivered in your family, in your home, praise God like they're already healed. If somebody needs to be brought up drugs, brought up alcohol, praise God as if they're already brought out. They need to be brought out of prison. Come on. Praise God like the prison door is just open. I need somebody to praise God like it's already done. It's already happening. God is already doing it. God is already doing it. God is already doing it for you. Because there's a plan for your life. Your wife. Pray for your wife. Pray for your husband. That whatever you're asking God to do, God is already doing it. God is already doing it. Shoot their name in the atmosphere. You that are on Facebook Live, Instagram, shoot the name of the people. You want to see so blessed. You want to see walk in the newness of life. Shoot the name on the atmosphere. Type it in. Put it in the box. And we're going to be praying for you. In the name of Jesus. Every hand lifted. I want every hand lifted. It shall be glory. After this. After the 40 years of the wilderness. They finally got to the other side. Even though Moses had to be replaced. It did not stop the plan of God for the children of Israel to get the other side. On the other side of your situations and circumstances, something great is happening. I want to speak that into your life. On the other side of your situation and your circumstances, something great is happening. And I know you can't see it, but you've got to believe it. Y'all hear what I'm saying to you? I know you don't see it. Faith is not about seeing. Faith is about believing. And on the other side, God is doing something in And I want you to receive and accept what God is doing in your life now in the name of Jesus. I spoke it, but I want you to receive and accept the great thing that God is doing in your life right now in the name of Jesus. I believe great things are happening in the body of Christ this year. I believe God is allowing us to pick up spiritual momentum. I think God is teaching us how to live in the abundance of life. How to live on purpose with purpose. Tap into your spiritual identity. And you're going to see God in everything. How to do I said, you can tap into your spiritual identity and you're going to see God in everything. Because the Bible still says, all things work together for good of them that love the Lord and them who are called according to His purpose. Are y'all hearing that in the Holy Ghost? Give it to close and before we do, I need you to do me a favor. You're going to have to trust God on this. But then you did either elbow, walk by, touch, however you want to do it. I need you to do it to seven people. The weight of God's glory is on your life. Seven children. Elbow them, tell them. The weight of God's glory is on your life. That's the manifestation of God's presence. That's the power of God. That's the honor of God. And that is the will of God's glory that's on your life. It is heavy. God is doing some heavy things in your life. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be God. Hallelujah. I said it's amazing. It's going to be God. It's a powerful thing that God's going to do in your life. Amazing. God's got some great things for you, man. Great things, great things, great things, great things, great things are coming, great things are coming. Somebody shout, my best days are in front of me. My best days are in front of me, my worst days are behind me. If you didn't kill me now, if you didn't kill me by now, you're not going to get me. The devil is a liar. You're trying to mess up my family, the devil is a liar. I'm stepping in the middle of the ocean. Hey. Here's the Holy Ghost. All of the sections of Greater is coming. 
Where is God? You haven't seen nothing yet. What God is going to do in your life. Hallelujah. I, I, I want to show you something and not let you go home. It's five minutes away. Sure, come here, Sister Sherman. I just want to show you something that God showed me. I'm only going to do what God showed me. Turn that to the camera. I, I saw Sister Joe over there. And initially, I don't know who I was talking to, but I said, that was that you I was talking to? I was talking to somebody. I said, that's Sister Joe. And then as I got close, I saw her different. I saw her different. I know it's her, but I saw her different. And I walked over and I spoke to her, and I spoke to her mother, I spoke to the family, Bird and all of them. And I said, man, I walked away and I said, that's the glamour of her life. But God said, that's not the glamour, that's the glory. <laughs> because the enemy has been trying to fight her. About certain things in her life. But God wanted me to let her know it's not glamour, it's glory. You yeah. don't buy your name for salvation. It's not going to be an outside change, it's going to be an inside change. And what God's given you in your life it's going to be because of all of the stuff you endured, all of the stuff you went through, you kept quiet, you didn't say nothing when you could have said something, you held your peace. So God told me to tell you, it's not the glamour, it's the glory. That's what you are like. And everything that the enemy meant for your bad, God just turned it around for your good. Everything he did, every tear you had to cry, every time you had to shut your mouth and not say nothing, every time they didn't know what you was going through and you didn't tell nobody, that's when I heard your cry. Okay. I hurt you. I hurt you. And today, it's not the glory. It's the glory. Somebody give God a hand back and pray for the glory. Give me a hand to the name of the Lord where you are. Lord, just gather with us Facebook, Instagram. We're praying for you as well. We're open at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings. We're having gathered of the minds at the round table. We're doing amazing topics. This morning was on commitment. 1045 is our morning worship. Those of you on Facebook, Instagram, we're 920 Northwest Night Ave, or Florida 333 3, 3, 1, 1, 394 Visit us. You can plan a seat to the ministry through Venmo and Sale. Grab somebody, tell them to come by. The fire of God is going to be falling this place every time we walk in the door. Every time we walk in the door, the fire of God is going to be falling this place. We're going to do amazing, amazing, powerful things. Can I say this to you all? And I'm going to close, I promise you. My pandemic is over. I can't speak on the world. My, my personal pandemic is over. I'm blood covered, I'm blood washed. And there's too much work for me to do. For anything to come in and what God has promised Oh, y'all wish I had somebody in here. Oh, because that has been somebody's wilderness. But God said, it's time to move forward. If I could you play moving forward for me? That boy looked at me like that. All I want you to do is this you're moving forward. I want you to get a rhythm with it. Come on, y'all got rhythm. All you're doing is moving forward. I want you to create that over your life. I don't care what you're going through. I want you to say, I'm moving forward. Just, just tell me I'm moving forward. Come on, I'm moving forward. Yes, come on. All of this nature with you. No need to come on Facebook and Instagram. We're prophetically telling you. You're moving forward. You're coming out. You're doing great things. You're counting things. 
Your ministry's been blessed. Your heaven's been blessed. Your humanity's been blessed. You come out of the house. 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 transition, the transformation that you're doing. Greater things on the front of us, our best days are yet to come. There shall be glory after this God. We thank you for everyone at the sanctuary, those that are joining us live on Facebook and Instagram. There shall be glory after this. You are moving forward in the name of Jesus. If you don't know the Lord, we're praying for you right now by the power of the Holy Ghost that you shall be saved and filled with this Holy Spirit. I pray blessings, miracles on your life from this day moving forward. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare it to be so. And the people of God in this say, Amen. Clap your hands and God glory all over the sanctuary. Shake your mighty hands and all over the world. You may all things be. Now we're fire. I want to bring you in right now. If you're saying, I want to be a member of Child Rapid Fellowship Center, I want to bring you in right now with the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, black hands. Come on, come on, brother. Come on. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Just come, just come, just come. I don't know why. Y'all know me. I, 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 I walk prophetically. There's supposed to be at least another one or two people here. That's supposed to come up here and you're saying, this is going to be my own church from now on. 
Declare to you, my past is over. 